Uh, I'm Fergus Sinclair, co-convener of the um, Transformative Partnership uh, Platform and Agroecology with Philippe Vast of CIRAD. And uh, it's fantastic to welcome you all to this activation workshop to get this community of practice really humming. Um, and I'm going to hand over to our moderator today, Matthias Geck, um, who many of you will already know. Presently, he's um, with BioVision in uh, Switzerland, but soon to join uh, C4 ICRAF uh, in Nairobi. And he's been a member of the advisory group of the TPP since its inception um, uh, a couple of years ago. So Matthias, um, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, dear Fergus, for those nice introductory welcome remarks and welcome everybody to today's activation, activation workshop of the Community of Practice or COP or the Transformative Partnership Platform on Agroecology. Um, as Fergus said, my name is Matthias Gack. I'm your moderator today. I'm currently with BioVision Foundation and I'm an advisory board member of the Transformative Partnership Platform. And I will soon um, join the wonderful Agroecology before we start with our interesting project program today, I would just like to let you know if um, you would like to follow rather in Spanish or English, you can click at the bottom of your screen where it says interpretation and choose in, uh, Spanish or French as a language. And um, I would also need to inform you that this event is being recorded for future use on YouTube and other channels. And if we receive many requests for um, a new workshop, we will do our best to schedule one. Um, further, I would like to know that, uh, like to let you know that the chat function has been disabled, but any questions you may have, you can pose in the Q&A window. Um, our colleagues from the TPP will do our best, will do their best to um, answer all questions as they come in. And we will collect questions for the final part of this activation workshop, which is indeed the question and answer session. And all questions we cannot answer immediately will be followed up in writing and all participants of today's activation workshop will be notified by email accordingly. Um, finally, you can also pose all your questions in English, French or Spanish, and we'll do our best to answer them accordingly. And um, very importantly, I would like to just give a quick introduction of what the plan is today um, and then hand over to our first speaker. So we'll first hear a little introduction of what the Transformative Partnership Platform or TPP on Agroecology is all about, how it came to be and what its main features and achievements have been today. Then we'll hear a bit more about the details of how it functions and what it has been doing so far. Subsequently, there will be an introduction to the Global Landscape Forum and particularly its online platform, the GLFX, on which the community of practice of the TPP is hosted. And then we'll get to the more interactive part where Fabio will be introducing some of the activities and features of this community of practice. There will be some polling on planned and possible future ideas for making this COP lively and exciting for everyone. And finally, there will be a question and answer session where we hope we can address all your major questions. With this, let me just say that it's an honor to be here and it's, it's great to see so many people joining. I think what makes agroecology different is really the engagement with all relevant stakeholders and it's a pleasure to see many of you here. With this I would like to hand back over to Fergus Sinclair who has introduced himself already so I don't need to do that um, and I think most of you probably know him um, quite well as the lead author of the uh, groundbreaking HLPE report on agroecology, the co-convener of the Agroecology TPP and chief scientist at C4ECRAF and also co-coordinator -co of the Agroecology coalition. Fergus, over to you for a quick introduction of the Agroecology TPP. Thank you. Okay, super. Fabio, do we have the um, uh, the slides up? And let's move straight on to the next slide. Um, the TPP uh, began uh, really through uh, activities during 2019, such as the HLP report, um, the, the CIRAD, CGAIR um, um, program on, on agroecology um, and the Global Commission on Adaptation um, uh, report on 
uh, agroecology contributing to resilience of, of agriculture. And we look at this slide from uh, uh, the center outwards because the activity of the TPP is in the various uh, landscapes, uh, farms, the places uh, where agroecology is happening, and then um, um, the uh, global research and um, uh, advocacy system supports that work on the ground. Next slide. So very simply, what the uh, TPP is all about is addressing knowledge and implementation gaps that constrain the wide scale uptake of agroecological agri transitions. Next slide. And those three words are important. The idea is to be transformative, not just to do research, um, um, but to make sure that things actually change on the ground. Secondly, it's a partnership. And that's really important because lots of people are working on agroecology. If we work together, um, then we're likely to make faster progress um, than if we're operating separately. And so a platform is what makes this all possible. And it uses this pattern principle of working bottom up and top down at the same time to see what's feasible uh, with farmers on the ground um, and food system, other food system actors, and um, to create the enabling environment and remove lock-ins um, that constrain uh, adoption. Next slide. So the governance of the TPP um, is threefold. There are three um, uh, donor countries at the moment, that's well, France, Switzerland, um, and the European Union. There are three research providers, that's C4 ICRAF, the French research institutions, and um, uh, the, the one CGIR. There is then um, three um, civil society farmer organizations, the Alliance for Food Sovereignty in Africa, um, the Asian Farmers Association, and uh, the Latin American representative of the Indigenous Partnership. Next slide. And supporting uh, uh, the, the work in an advisory role um, is an advisory group, which currently consists of um, uh, people mainly from UN organizations, from UNEP, um, FAO, um, uh, IFAD, um, but also Biovision uh, and TMG. Next slide. Through 2020 and, and 2021 up to September, where um, the coalition for um, transforming food systems through agroecology came into being, um, there was a huge amount of activity in getting um, projects and, and um, modes of working together um, on the table. Um, and it was very successful with nearly 150 million worth of, of project funding around um, key uh, gaps that have been identified by um, this collective that is uh, the TPP. And these are projects which are practical, focused, and um, with partners uh, on the ground in different countries. Next. So at UNFSS, at the last moment, really, um, the group of Friends of Agroecology, which are uh, countries, um, are member countries uh, um, of um, uh, FAO, made a, a, a strong uh, um, letter to the um, UN suggesting that agroecology should be on uh, the uh, radar of UNFSS. In the pre-summit, um, an agroecology session was set up. Uh, at a lunchtime, it was one of the best attended uh, sessions of, of the summit, and it led to the development with the support of the Transformative Partnership Platform of uh, the coalition. Next slide. And the important thing about the coalition is it's a coalition of the willing. And a lot of you may have noticed that the recommendations in the HLP report got quite watered down from uh, the, the uh, uh, original uh, when it came to the policy convergence process. So we're hoping by uh, those countries that get together, and there's nearly 40 that have already joined, including, including the European Union, the African Union, and ECOWAS, 
um, and uh, over 60 organizations, so it's already a coalition of 100, that by having uh, some common ground, we'll be able to make faster progress on action. And that's what we're interested, as far as the coalition is concerned, is making action on the ground. Next slide. And there are five working groups, and the one that the TPP is most closely associated with is the Research and Innovation Working Group, which of course itself then interacts with the others. Next slide. Of course, the TPP operates on the basis of the 13 HLP principles as setting out what agroecology is all about, but it doesn't just follow the classic Gleesman uh, transition, because next slide, we realize that there are multiple transitions, click again, um, that uh, start from different places um, and follow different trajectories according uh, to context, click again. And once we bring the consumers as well as the producers into the picture, then agency uh, of people throughout the food system to, to have really democratic food systems becomes a really significant uh, element. Next slide. And there are eight working domains that have been identified for immediate progress within uh, the TPP, and you'll hear more about uh, what's going on in some of those from Lisa later on. And with that, um, I uh, hope that you've got, uh, you probably all already knew most of that, but that's what the TPP, uh, how the TPP came about and what its key focus is. Thank you very much, dear Fergus, for this really good overview of what the TPP is all about. And just for those who just joined now, would like to let you know that you can um, change the language setting when you get go to the bottom of your screen, click on interpretation, and you can also listen in Spanish or French. You can also always use, make use of the Q&A window, pose any questions you might have, and the colleagues, as you're seeing, probably are answering some of the questions already, and we'll ensure that all questions are being answered. Answered. If you prefer, you can always ask, pose your questions or comments in French or Spanish as well. With this, I would like to hand over to the second presenter of today, which is Lisa Fuchs, um, a wonderful social systems and engagement scientist at c 4 ecraf and also the scientific coordinator of the TPP. Lisa, if I'm not mistaken, you will give us a bit more insights on into how the TPP works and what it's doing specifically. And I think that also helps in answering some of the questions that are actually being posed on the chat. And those of you who have noticed, um, have seen that Fabio has a beautiful cat that just walked in front of his face. So over to you, Lisa, thank you. Thank you very much. Let me start sh sharing my slides. Okay, so there we go. As just introduced, I will speak a bit today about the modes of engagement, some of our projects and some of the events that the TPP is participating in. So currently we have three levels of membership that represent our current mode of engagement. So they are partners, forum members, and DLFX Agroecology TPP community of practice members. The difference is that partners are organizational members. They formally engage in the TPP in various TPP bodies, such as the advisory group, the steering committee, the science policy interface, or the capacity development interface. Um, and they do that, they do this formal engagement, they either engage in those bodies or they align existing projects or jointly design integrated new projects with the TPP. Those are the partners. Then we have the forum members, also organizational members, no formal arrangements, but they sign a membership form. You can find the membership form on the website or you can send us an email and we can send it to you as well. What matters for the forum members, so beyond or different from the partners, if you will, there is no formal interaction through projects, but there is a mutual recognition of a value add between the two. So there, it's also part of the membership form that the forum members explain and manifest an interest in implementing the HLPE agroecological principles. And then the third level of membership, which is what we are talking about today, is the community of practice, which is for individuals and which is a non-formal membership. So Fagas briefly spoke about our projects and the projects, our project 
um, portfolio has steadily grown over the last years, as you can tell, but he spoke about our eight, eight working domains and the central docking component. So the central docking component, as we call it, is what we see in orange or in red. Um, so the central functioning that is uh, comprises the advisory group, the steering committee and the secretariat, as well as the science policy interface and the capacity development um, facility. Then beyond that, you see the yellow streams. Those are ongoing projects, and you see the abbreviations and acronyms of some of them. Also, some explanations on your screen. And the green, um, the green areas you can see, are new areas of work that we're currently developing and, and interested in. And I will be speaking briefly about a few of our projects. Unfortunately, I can't introduce all of them now, but I'm just highlighting a few of them but you find more information about all of our projects on the website um, and from various partners with whom we're working on those, on those projects. Just briefly, um, three of our newest projects, I listed them here for you. One of them is the Transformative Land Investments Project. The second one is tracking the implementation of the CFS policy recommendations. And, and just in is the co-impact for systems change for scaling agroecological transitions in Andhra Pradesh in India. So I'll speak briefly about some of our projects. Sorry. So the first project, um, also one of our first projects that we had um, as part of the TPP was the viability project or is the viability project, um, which is called the socioeconomic viability and understanding ad adoption decisions. So the core objective of the project is really to understand viability of different agro agroecological options and understand how they're being adopted by whom. Um, the project is composed of 12 case studies across Africa, and you can see them on the screen. It has a, a three-year time frame and is implemented by 10, more than 10 partners from across CJR, French research organizations, universities, and research and training centers. And viability is looked at in, in terms of various aspects, including labor, income and food security, value of ecosystem services, etc. As I said, you can also find more about the project on our website. One of our second core projects is um, revolves around agroecologically conducive policies. Here, the objective is uh, to or has been to conduct a worldwide review of policies that are conducive to agroecological transitions across various policies, inclu including those that are consumer oriented, producer oriented, market and food environment oriented, macro and trade oriented, and cross cutting. Um, there has been an interesting uh, co-creation process and collaboration. It started with an introductory event in July 2021. Then there were several rounds yeah. of, of, of written input and feedback, and a final paper was presented in July 2022. But the work it continues. Another a core project is our metrics project, um, whose core objective is to develop and scale holistic metrics. It is part of the wider transitions project funded by the European Union. Effort. Um, it, the metrics project specifically, and you see that outline here on your screen again, is that it really includes a three-step process for identification of metrics that are out there that are being used by various practice uh, practitioners and various scientific organizations um, to, to conduct a scientific review of, of these metrics and then through an engagement process, co-create and, and, and work on the adoption of, of these holistic metrics for agroecology. It's across various scales, including system landscapes, farms, and plots, and really focuses on agroecological system performance before, beyond the, the mere um, system characterization, which many of the existing metrics do. Yet another project is the One CGIR Agroecology Initiative, whose core objective is to support agroecological food system transitions. It is um, implemented by a partnership of seven one CGIR entities together with C4ECRAF and CIRAD under the auspices of the TPP. We have seven case studies in seven countries, four in Africa, two in Asia, and one in the Americas. And it works through the establishment of an international network of agroecological living landscapes that we call the ALS. You also see that the international network on the right-hand side um, with the representation of the different systems. And the integrated, there's an integrated focus within the project on innovation co-creation, holistic metrics, value chains and business models, policies, and also agency and behavior change. One of the elements that the TPP is, is, is looking into more and more. And I think one of the last projects I'm presenting today is the One Million Voices project, whose core objective is to develop a citizen science tool to address knowledge and implementation gaps. Very interesting project that we're very excited about. 
Um, it follows a participatory co-creation process with regional farmers, producers, and indigenous associations. Um, we are conducting three regional dialogues and working on a fourth regional dialogue. Um, and these dialogues to identify a scope and a mode for this uh, citizen science tour is accompanied by a worldwide review of existing agriculture citizen science initiatives and projects, and also works in close collaboration with knowledge partners, specifically the Citizen Science Center in Zurich. Um, so those were a few highlights into our existing projects. Um, beyond that, the TPP is also represented and engages in outward facing events. Some of the recent events that we participated in is Stockholm Plus 50, where we had an associated session on quelling an imperfect storm. Um, during the World Congress on Agroforestry, uh, we participated in the closing plenary on the agroforestry agroecology's nexus. At NAP Expo, um, we gave a keynote presentation that featured the TPP and the coalition. And we just participated in the second Mexican Congress of Agroecology last week. Some of the upcoming events, again, also a selection, and you can find more about this on our website, particularly on our news section that has been very active so far, um, is we have at the moment um, a meeting in Montpellier on transformative research and action for food systems convening. Then in early October, we have the Asia Pacific Symposium on Agri-Food Systems Transformation. In October, in mid-October, we have CFS 50 in Rome, and then in November, we have UNFCC, COP27 in Cairo that we will be participating in also through various events. And this is my last slide. So I have been speaking about our current modes of engagement and have been presenting some of the work we are doing. And today we're really looking for strengthening the broader community involvement because agroecology is about co-creation and really looking at expanding our engagement beyond the scientific community through the digital community of practice. And with that, I'm handing it back to Fabio. Thank you very much. To Matthias, I would say. Sure. Thank you so much, Lisa. And sorry for interrupting you. That was my internet connection that went off for a second, but I, I hope I'm audible again now. Um, thank you so much, Lisa. That was so inspiring and, and super interesting what all the TPP is doing. And I think you finished well with the last slide in terms of saying this community of practice is what it's all about. We, we need you to make things happen. And as, I've see, as I'm seeing that more people have still joined, I would like to remind you again that you can um, listen also in French and Spanish by clicking on interpretation at the bottom of your screen. And I would like to let all of you know, please do use the question and answer box at the bottom of your screen for posing any questions, making comments that you may have, whether in English, French or Spanish, everything is welcome. We're collecting questions for the subsequent um, question and answer session, and many questions are being answered live already. With this, I would like to hand over to Anita Moriaja, um, um, who is the Community Engagement Officer of the Global Landscape Forum, and particularly its online um, platform, the GLFX. And she will give us an overview of what the GLF, and particularly the GLFX, does and how people can engage in the various chapters and, more generally, the modes of engagement. So over to you, Anita. Thank you. Thank you, Matthias. I'm um, just going to quickly share my screen and present. Um, yeah, welcome everybody. My name is Anita Moragia, and I am the Communications and Community Engagement Officer for the GLFX uh, Innovation and GLF in general. Um, today I'll be talking to you more specifically about the platform um, that the TPP uh, on agroecology is on and um, yeah and also just GLF in, in general. So just a little um, rundown of what the Global Landscapes Forum is. Uh, the Global Landscapes Forum is uh, known as the, is the world's largest uh, knowledge-led forum on integrated sustainable land use. And um, just a couple of uh, interesting facts. Um, the GLF has connected more than 80,000 organizations, um, 60,000 youth, 90,000 governments, 275,000 people from 185 countries, and has had a global reach of over 1.5 billion people. 
Um, the Global Landscapes Forum is actually made out of about five um, innovations, and I'll just briefly speak through each one and then specifically speak about the GLFX innovation. So, um, you know, there is the uh, digital knowledge commons, first and foremost. Um, there is the youth, so pioneering youth leadership, and this includes restoration stewards and youth and landscapes. These are what we would uh, describe as communities in action. There is the knowledge uh, and learning uh, innovation, um, and this includes the Landscape uh, Academy. Um, there is the sustainable finance team, um, and these uh, this is the sustainable finance team. And then lastly, there is the GLFX um, innovation. And this houses the, G the Global Landscapes Forum chapters, and um, also the Global Landscapes uh, communities, Global Landscapes Forum's communities of practice. And I'll chat a little bit more about what these two groups are. Um, so the GLFX in short um, is uh, one of, of course, the GLF's five innovations as I just um, said, um, but it's also, it houses two groups of communities. There's the communities of practice and there's the GLF chapters, which are all housed on the GLFX platform. So um, a GLF chapter would be best described as a local community or network of organizations united by a geographical location and working to accelerate action on the ground. Whereas a community of practice is a knowledge-led community that is united by a common theme with the aim to produce and share knowledge. So to that effect, um, we have GLF chapters around the world. Um, in total, we have about 10 in Africa. We have three in Latin America and the Caribbean. And then we have two in Asia. And um, these are our current GLF chapters right now. We have just closed our recent call for chapters in uh, Latin America. So that will be growing quite soon. And we will be opening a new call for chapters in Africa on Friday. Um, sorry, on Thursday, and um, that will also be a growing number. Um, and these are the current uh, global, uh, the current communities of practice also on the platform. And of course, as we see here, there's the TPP as well. And so a key difference in sort of uh, envisioning the platform is as much as it may uh, be uh, natural to us to engage on it as perhaps any other social network, there are some uh, key differences. So whereas on, you know, any other social media platform that we usually engage on, you know, people are usually connected by this uh, interest in friendships, um, relationships, or perhaps a shared interest. Uh, the difference with a community of practice is that it's, uh, people are connected connected by the shared specialism um, role or common goal. Um, you know, whereas on any regular sort of social network platform, um, it doesn't necessarily require one-on-one -on -one, uh, or group interaction within a specified community. Um, whereas in this case, a decision to join a community is to deepen your understanding of a particular subject um, by interacting with it on an ongoing basis on the platform. Um, social media networks, of course, are a lot more casual and informal, you kind of go with what is uh, being discussed at the time or what is on the top of your feed. Um, whereas the community of practice is a lot more structured and it requires a, a lot more commitment as well. Um, and we'll hear a lot more about that from um, Fabio and Daria a little bit later. Um, you know, of course, as a social media network, uh, you know, it's self-generated content, what's trending at the time, I guess also depending on news or current happenings. Whereas with the community of practice, um, you know, this content is uh, self-generated, um, it's planned, and it's also um, community generated. It's also um, working with the community to also know what kind of content they would like in their community of practice and what they would like to engage in. Um, you know, lastly, last two is, um, of course, a social media network, you know, it supports self-promotion and it broadcasts a very like one-way communication style. 
Whereas a community of practices, you know, we really encourage a two-way sort of communication style where there's a lot of participation amongst members, amongst um, uh, the community of practice a team, but also amongst, you know, the community of practice community as well um, on the platform. And of course, as we're all familiar on social media networks, you know, there's functions such as follow, friend, like, connect, share, subscribe, um, which create very loose links to one another. Um, but, you know, a community of practice, it takes um, a very detailed content calendar that's planned based on, you know, the learning needs of the community of practice, um, you know, events, networking, workshops and such, um, all with the combined aim of furthering the knowledge of the community of practice. Um, and so, of course, the question at this point would be what value do communities of practice gain for active engagement on the GLFX platform? And this is where, you know, the connection with the other GLF innovations come in. Um, and so, of course, you have opportunities to also engage in GLF's broader events, um, such as our conferences, mm -hmm. um, other workshops that we're, we're uh, hosting, other innovations, whether it's sustainable finance, whether it's the youth team, whether it's the GLF chapters from across the world, um, whether it is the uh, knowledge commons. Um, you know, for example, we are having GLF Africa this week, um, and then and also climate uh, will be participating in COP27 um, later on. And so there would be opportunities, you know, to participate in that in various uh, ways. There's also the opportunities to engage uh, communities of practice with chapter interaction. We have some very, a very dedicated group of chapters across um, the world and they, they also have, you know, learning needs and, um, you know, the ability to be able to facilitate that interaction and have that, um, one-on-one -on -one, uh, interaction with the chapters is also um, something that's possible on the platform and also beyond the platform as well. And of course, you know, um, while COVID accelerated our uh, remote working and use of the of the digital space, um, you know, the GLFX platform really uh, closes down the distance between uh, people and also the ability of communicating. Instead of, you know, writing in long sort of email threads, um, you know, communities of practice can self-organize in forums uh, to have, you know, themes that they're discussing. Um, you know, there can be uh, newsletters that uh, the community of practice can send out based on opportunities or events or things that are happening within the community of practice. So really making use of the digital space. Um, and so what I'm going to do right now is have a little bit of an interactive session and I will um, sort of take you through what it would look like for you to join um, the, the GLFX platform. So as you can see over here, the um, website is GLFX dot global landscapes forum dot org and um, this is the uh, sign in page that it will take you through and it has all of the information of what I just sort of uh, presented and an overview of some of the community news that's going on in the platform and of course upcoming events we can see today's workshop on there as well um, and so as you scroll through this um, if you're wanting to become a, a member of the uh, TPP uh, community of practice you would sort of you would click um, join the movement and it would take you to a sign-in page and of course you know as with <laughs> anywhere else you sort of um, input your details um, your name your the email account that you would like to use for uh, your account and this area in particular is very important because this is sort of your profile on the page and what people would see so it's very important that you sort of fill this out quite um, you know, it's important that you fill it out as, as uh, fully as you can. And so that, you know, when people can sort of search you or are searching for the area that you work in or your expertise, um, it can be quite, uh, I guess, concise and, and they can find you and, and ask you specifically about what, uh, specifically about what you're about, I guess. Um, and so you go sort of through this process and um, follow the instructions. It'll sort of give you um, an email that you will uh, respond to and fill out your uh, login details. Um, but for the purposes of time, I will also just log in to my account. Um, let's go and give you an overview of what the, the um, platform looks like. 
taking its time. <laughs> And so this is the homepage for um, the GLFX platform. And um, the great thing is, is that um, as you know, the more you engage on the platform, the more it shows you what is um, new for you. So this is the homepage. You see recently active users, you see the upcoming events, a live feed of the um, global GLF Twitter. Um, and then there's also, of course, the uh, homepage categories that you can peruse um, at your uh, uh, at your disposal. And here's the admin panel. Not everyone will have that. It's just because I'm the community manager. And um, what is really important if you want to join the um, TPP uh, community of practice, you will have to navigate to the page and join the TPP from there. So you'd go to groups, of course. And then uh, these are it's a short list of all the groups that I am part of. And then you would go to communities of practice and it will list all of them here. And of course, you know, the transformative partnership uh, platform on agroecology. And for those of you who have not joined it will have the join button here. So of course you will click join and um, it will automatically uh, make you a member of that uh, community of practice. And of course you would go to um, the group and uh, <laughs> excuse me, and then yeah, this is uh, the the TPP uh, COP. Um, so that's just a quick um, overview of um, you know how to become a member of the GLFX platform and specifically how to become a member of uh, the TPP COP. Um, and with that, I think I will hand back over to uh, Matthias. Thank you. Thanks so much, Anita. That was very important and very interesting. I think. It also answers some of the questions that I'm seeing in the Q&A window. For anyone who has just joined now, I would like to remind you that you can make use of this question and answer window at the bottom, post questions and comments, and the colleagues are answering them live already, and we will highlight some of them in the subsequent Q&A session. Um, with this, we would go to a nice follow-up to Anita's presentation and go a bit more into the interactive mode of the COP as well, with Fabio and Daria, both communication specialists at C4 ECRAF and doing much of the wonderful communication work of the Agroecology TPP, who will guide us through a little bit of what the COP of the Agroecology TPP is all about, what features exist, how can you be part of it, what modes of engagement engagement exists. So over to you, Fabio. Thank you very much, Matthias. So let me just uh, share my screen. Uh, okay. So as Matthias said, I'm going to go uh, a bit more into the core of today's uh, uh, workshop. Now the topic of this workshop is called activation of the digital community of practice. It's not that this community of practice has not been active so far, but we did not open it up to the uh, general public. And this is what we're doing today. Now, why are we doing this today? Um, we had uh, two uh, very important events um, last year with uh, very high participation. And um, a lot of the participants requested to uh, join the agroecology uh, TPP, um, sorry, the agroecology TPP community of practice uh, um, space and in fact we had received a lot of adhesions and uh with all the details but due to privacy uh issues we weren't able to um immediately automatically sort of bring them in our family so uh one of well, we had a long discussion about this with the with the people in the agroecology uh, tpp and we decided that the best way to welcome you on board was to um, prepare this activation workshop, illustrate to you and to whoever was interested what we're doing and what are the upcoming uh, novelties and explain, guide you step by step to, to be part of our family. So I hope that after this workshop, uh, a lot of you will register if you haven't already um, and let's get going. So um, uh, Anita already spoke a bit a bit about what is a community of practice, how it differs from social media and so forth. I think 
what is really important that we uh, keep in mind here is that we are starting uh, from science. This is a community of practice that is dealing hand, hand in hand with science. So here, uh, the uh, I think the key word is really coming together, share, unlearn, but and co-create. Even though the keyword is not in the slide, it will come up very often in my presentation. So, um, and value. What is the value of you know being in a community practice rather than being in a uh, generic Facebook group on agroecology? I guess there's plenty of those. Uh, I think it's um, it boils down to, of course, you can see in my slide, learning, collaboration, belonging. But it boils down really to um, creating a um, a group, a family. Now, uh, I've been I participate in many different uh, social media groups and, and 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 other similar things, and you really don't create that kind of. Um, it's very rare that you create that kind of um, sort of family feeling. And and here, I think the idea is to try to uh, go in that direction. Of course with the aim of co-creating knowledge, co-creating science. So uh and 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 those are some of the values that come along with this with this idea. So we discussed in uh our within the agroecology DPP a lot about the vision of our COP, of our community of practice. Uh, so I really want to spend some time here in reading this out because we 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 went we had a brainstorming exercise with Lisa, Daria, and others in the TPP, and we really chose these words um, carefully. So, what we what we want to say is that this community of practice, so the Agroecology TPP digital community of practice, is an open space to discuss and bring to the forefront agroecology-related topics, news, and ideas, starting, of course, from the Agroecology TPP partners scientific investigation. So that's really the 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 starting point. Of course, we're, we're welcoming other inputs from anyone in the COP, but uh, what we should keep in mind is that we're starting from science and specifically from the agroecological science that the uh, agroecology TPP partners are doing. Now, as I said before, it does focus on co-creating knowledge from bottom up. So that's where it's a space where um, anyone is at par with scientists, so the farmer can speak with the scientists and also the uh, general enthusiast on agroecology can speak directly with uh, our TPP members. And we'll get back to that in a moment. It aims to bring agroecology practitioners on the ground, farmers and farmer groups, scientists, researchers, and all those interested in agroecology together to share and co-create knowledge in a way that is relevant, impactful, and rigorous. I, I, I really want to stress these last three words, relevant, impactful, and rigorous. So it, it has to be relevant what we do and what we all do for for everybody. And it has to have an impact, a positive impact. Of course, that is, uh, we didn't really stress it out, but that was the idea and and rigorous. So the science behind it, it has to be, um, it has to be hard science uh, and uh, so rigorous. And it, it's a place where everyone's voice counts. As I said before, you're at par and contributes to bridging both knowledge and implementation gaps to hinder agroecology transition. So that's another thing that also Fergus was, Fergus was mentioning. We, it, It's not only knowledge gaps that we're really tackling, but it's also implementation gaps. So you might have the knowledge, but there's a lot of other things that are hindering the agroecological transition. And that's where we want to really go into. We want to dive in, dive into. Okay, so um, what do we offer? Now, uh, I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about this a lot during the presentation, but at a glance, we offer, of course, you know, up-to-date agroecology-related news, success stories, resources, case studies, publications, videos, whatever, webinars, events, all in one place, all available to all the members. They're on our GLFX space. It's also, we, we offer a dialogue, so the exchange of knowledge and co-creation and peer-to-peer -peer learning, as we discussed before. And also inside and outside perspectives on uh, our related topics. So uh, we want to encourage people to bring um, some critical reflection on agroecology, on what we do, on what, on what they are doing uh, at a given moment. 
also wider access to the GLF uh, GLF uh, network, as Anita was saying before. Uh, you're not. I mean, once you you um, join the GLFX platform, you're not limited to uh, just staying into the Agroecology TPP group. You can join other groups, other chapters. And of course, we have a privileged um, channel to GLF. So for example, as you see in my slide, we are also um, available. We are capable of, of giving you some free tickets for GLF, uh, GLF Africa uh, 2022, which is in two days. So if you join our community practice today or tomorrow, we will be distributing to all the members um, um, free access to this uh, to this event. And that's a place where you can do networking and follow a lot of very interesting discussions. Um, and then, of course, as I just said, it's an opportunity to network directly and connect with people, not necessarily in GLF, but it can be other people joining our, our network and farmers, researchers, and start a conversation. Um, so let's have a look at this. Um, Anita browsed a bit our, our website, but uh, I'm going to go through uh, a few of the things that we offer in detail. So this is the website. We've discussed it. Well, there is a very long URL, but we've also made a short URL for convenience. And um, that's where you can access uh, our material. Um, the website features a live feed. Now, anybody who's used Facebook will recognize the format very quickly. It's very similar to Facebook. You can post your news, whatever it may be, a link, uh, a topic, an argument, a reflection, and uh, it's a wall where anybody can react. You can get comments to what you're posting. You can also like you. Once you log in on and you create an account on uh, GLFX, you also get notifications uh, of what you're posting. So if people react, you get a, you get an email, and and you can also disable that if you if you don't like it, and so forth. Um, we have our news section. Okay, and this is where you read about our upcoming things and uh, also maybe a post-event reflection or some news about what we've done. Um, there's OPADs and, and other things. Of course, there's the resource section where we have the media, the, the documents, the um, uh, videos, whatever it may be. Uh, also, there's the um, documents on how to formally join the, the TPP and so forth. We have a forum. So this is your typical forum where people um, can pitch a topic and then all the related uh, discussions on that topic are, are channeled. It's very different from a live feed. The live feed, you know, it's a wall. You're going to lose track of things after a few days. Um, a forum is for more permanent discussion, something that becomes sort of uh, where you, you build knowledge and sort of a, a resource that you go back to. Uh, our events, we, we run uh, quite a number of events per year and uh, some most of them are, are public and they are um, in three languages to uh, try to be as inclusive as possible. And we are about to release a newsletter. This will be quarterly. Uh, so I think our first issue will be this September. And it's going to be uh, all about the agroecology uh, TPP, um, what we do. So there's going to be a, a, main, um, a main article under the spotlight and other news upcoming events. A section specific on the Agroecology Coalition. Uh, Fergus spoke about it, its importance on, on the political side and uh, all our TPP partners, their updates and so forth. Um, signing up is very easy. You just go to our website. There's a nice button. It says newsletter. And you just, if you haven't signed up yet, please do so. Uh, email address, first name, last name, organization, country, subscribe, and you're in. Um, Okay, now uh, let's start talking a bit about some of the features that we've been thinking about. Now, one of the things that uh, has happened to us um, and it keeps on happening when we uh, do our events is we get flooded by questions. Uh, we've had some events where we topped uh, more than 150 questions. And this, of course, is extremely interesting for us and it's also extremely stimulating. Um, and it did 
um, uh, pose us the question or sort of a, a, it made us think that we should have probably create, created a document, which a FAQ, which we call FAQ, frequently asked questions on agro, agroecology. And so you can see here in the bullet list of a number of the standard questions we, we got in the past, like, you know, how, how can countries that are still locked in the agrarian reform paradigm move towards agroecological reforms? What are common obstacles to the implementation of agroecological processes? And probably some of the questions some of you have been writing in our Q&A window are similar, or if not exactly the same. So we are now distilling these hundreds of questions. They, so I think we, we've topped 200 uh, or even more. Um, uh, if we sum the different events we've done. And we are trying to make a, a, a streamlined document that will um, have a clear cut um, defined answers for the most frequent questions we get. And then on the other questions, uh, less frequent, we will treat uh, in a different way. So we're working on that and that's going to appear on, on our community of practice very soon. So stay tuned on that. Um, okay, and then we're also discussing with GLFX a number of upgrades that we would like to see in our platform. So uh, as I said, uh, you can disable uh, notifications, but maybe we can get a more refined customization of the notifications in the community of practice. Uh, we're thinking about an interactive calendar, some shared folders that you can populate, um, uh, some chat functions that might be uh, useful for us. Some data collection tools I saw, I was looking at the Q&A before and I saw somebody was asking about this. So we're, we're definitely thinking about it. Now, not all of this will be immediately available. We're still uh, brainstorming on this. Um, online dashboards so that you can immediately see what we're doing, where it's being done. And then, you know, things like this, tagging on live feeds so that even if the live feed, as I said before, is a bit confusing. After a while, if you tag appropriately some topics, then you can easily search for them and things like this. So it's really, this is, we're really thinking about how to improve the, the platform per se, so that everybody has a better user experience. Um, but then uh, we're also thinking about innovations. Now, one of the things we, we, we really discussed a lot about uh, before running this workshop is how can our community of practice be different from the other community of practices and, uh, uh, you know, Facebook groups or other uh, places, digital spaces where people get together. Now, and so this brainstorming um, exercise was carried out to um, quite an extensive period, I would say. We, we've discussed it at length and we came up with a list of things. And you can see them here listed, and I'm going to go through them very quickly, uh, giving you some ideas of what we're thinking. And then I'm, I'm going to ask you, the people in the room, to um, tell us what you think about this list and also what you think if you have other ideas. So we're going to do some polls after this slide. But let me go through this slide a second. So Agroecology TPP COP is really all about co-creation. So we really, this is your time. Uh, we want to really respond to your needs and to your ideas and to your suggestions. So this list, as I said, is a list that came up out of our own brainstorming, but we're gonna also ask you if you have further ideas, some other innovations. Let me go through these. So one of the things we thought is, why don't we uh, book a session with one of our scientists, like on a monthly basis or on a bi-monthly basis. So, you know, it's a walk-in room kind of thing. You know that at time, that time of the day, on that month, there's a scientist from the you know, from the agroecology TPP waiting in the chat or in the forum or somewhere um, for one hour or two hours, what it is, to answer questions. Anybody can come in, they can chat with the, with the scientists. So that's one idea. Um, another idea we had is, um, let's, why don't we do some innovation challenges? So there's some pressing topics and issues on agroecology and you, the people from the community of practice can propose an, your solution, your idea. How would you tackle that topic? How would you tackle that issue, that problem? What is your agroecological approach? And then we vote. Um, case studies examined. So uh, we 
of course, we 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 publish case studies on our website, and um, so best uh, case scenarios and kind of things, and you know, success stories. But our what if we walk you through them? Uh, so why don't we take one and really analyze it in depth? You know, we started from here, and this happened, and this happened, and 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 we can have you know a uh, some reflection around this. Then we thought you request a workshop. That's one of my favorites. You know, you just we build critical mass. People in the community practice want to know about a topic. Let's organize a workshop. After we get, you know, 100 requests, we just organize a workshop on that thing. That's it. Um, polls and quizzes. So if you're into that kind of thing, because some people like, I, personally, I do, I love learning with quizzes. Uh, it's just so much more fun uh, rather than, you know, reading like a lengthy paper, which is also interesting, but it's not that engaging. I love it when I get pitched the question and I'm like, I don't know the answer. Let me guess and let's see what happens. So we can, if you're interested, we could create, you know, a monthly quiz or a weekly quiz or whatever, or bi-monthly quiz. Um, and you test your, your knowledge and let's see how you go. Crowdsourcing pages and content. So uh, we thought, um, does is, is there a wiki on agroecology? Is there? Is there not? Would you like one? That would be interesting. I mean, agroecology is all about bottom up, uh, building bottom up, and you know, Wikipedia has been running for twenty plus years. And why not? Let's create a wiki on agroecology. Um, controversies explained. Now, this I discuss with Lisa a lot. I I think there's a lot of controversy around agroecology, certainly in certain uh, areas of the world. Oh, sorry for the noise. That's my cat. Um, certain uh, episodes uh, have been very controversial. I won't make any names right now. Oh, sorry, the cat is, he wants to play. Um, why don't we tackle these controversies? Why don't we go through them uh, one by one, you know, on a monthly basis or whatever? And we really try to try to uh, analyze them from different perspectives because usually um, when we look at agroecological controversies, they're not only about agriculture. <laughs> there's so much going around. No, There's all the uh, political part, there's all the social part, and so forth. So that could be something. And, and you don't often see this happening on, on you know, that uh, some communities or practices or, or organizations really take a stance on some of the controversies, because it's, it, it, it can be, it can be tricky and, and, and complicated. Okay, weekly focus on a forum. So, uh, Anybody in our community practice can pitch a topic on a forum, but uh, sometimes these go these might go sort of empty and not really uh, get get any traction. So maybe we can um, create a a focus, uh, a weekly focus, or a bi monthly focus, or a monthly focus on the forum, and then we sort of um, everybody focuses on that thing, and then we sort of all engage on that thing. Um, interactive online map. Uh, we're thinking we are going to work on an interactive map that displays all of the agroecological, uh, sorry, agroecology TPP projects. But then it would be really nice if this is opened up and anybody in the COP can actually input what they're doing and where, and then we could categorize. So these are the things that are being doing uh, from the TPP. These are the things that have been doing, are, are being, uh, you know, carried out by our uh, COP members and so forth. So that's another idea. And then, uh, oh yeah, I did already put the crowdsourcing. So, so sorry, I, I, this is a double. I had I hadn't seen that I had a double. So I, I'm done here. Okay. So these are the ideas that we were we we were discussing within ourselves. Now it's time to hear your voice. So you, I, I'm going to um, run a poll in a moment. So the way you can interact with this poll is you either type on your mobile phone or in your computer slido.com and you put the code TPPCOP or you just very simply scan the QR code and just it will bring you there. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing a second and I'm going to pull up the uh, the polling. Uh, just give me just one second and I'll be with you. Okay. All right. Here we go. So I think, okay, I guess you can see the, the screen here. Uh, and let's start the poll. So 
Now, the first question is- I'm not is, seeing your screen right now, Fabio. Oh, you're not? Okay, sorry. Oh, why is, wasn't that happening? Okay, wait, apologies for this. Oh, sorry, I, I, I hadn't pressed share. Okay, now, now, we, now you should be seeing it. Yes. Okay, <laughs> apologies for this. All right, so, okay. Um, no, sorry. Uh, so which of these innovative features should we implement uh, first in the agroecology TPPs uh, community of practice? So uh, I'm going to scroll through this. Oh, sorry, I need to hide the results. Sorry. Periodic monthly or bi-monthly online session with a member of the agroecology TPP. Propose a weekly focus topic for the forum, quizzes and polls, innovation challenges on pressing issues, case studies examined, interactive online map of the agroecology TPP projects, crowdsourcing or topic pages, basically the uh, wiki page for the agroecology, for agroecology, request a workshop on a specific topic and controversies explained. So don't be shy. I see there's only 13 people who's been voting. Uh, I know it takes some time to go on the screen, on the, on the Slido website, but we have over 270 people in the room and I, I really want to see some answers coming in. It's very simple. Scan the QR code on your mobile phone. It will bring you there. Or if you're on a computer, just type slido.com and just type the code TPPCOP and it will bring you into the space where you can vote. So uh, Matthias, I'm gonna give them uh, some time here uh, because uh, I think we should encourage uh, people to vote and. And I cannot move to the next question, otherwise people will stop, uh, will not be able to vote any longer. Yes, wonderful, Fabio, and thanks so much. I think that is that is really interesting what you've been presenting and talking about. Maybe while people are answering some of the or, or going through the polls on Slido, um, we can do like an interactive session between between Q and A and polls, so to speak. Yep. And I would just like to thank everyone for all of your great questions and comments that we have been receiving so far already. It's, it's really nice to see, even though in the beginning people were asking why the chat is disabled, we, we see the Q&A works, people are, people are interactive. And um, it's so nice to see how many people from different countries, different backgrounds are here. I think this is what it should be all about, that scientists, farmers, people from, from a small business, and people from around the world get to interact and ask their questions. And I think many of the questions you have been asking have been answered through some of the presentations and on the chat already. Um, and there have been quite a number of questions regarding as to where is the TPP active? People from Ethiopia, people from India, people from Pakistan, people from many different questions, uh, countries asking, is the TPP active in my country? So regarding one of the features, uh, an interactive online map, that would certainly speak for that, for people to get more visibility of who and what um, is, is active on agroecology in their respective countries. Sure. And there have also been quite a number of questions on how to join the TPP, the COP, etc. I do think these have been adequately answered um, through the, the um, presentations. And um, there has been one question from Patrick Mayamba on how somebody can join the research working group of the Agroecology Coalition. Um, maybe Fergus can give a bit of insights on that, but um, otherwise I could also just let you, Patrick, and anybody else interested know that for, for joining the Agroecology Coalition, it's a pretty straightforward process. You go Google Agroecology Coalition, you will find the website, and there you will, you will see all the details on how you can join. Usually it's institutions or organizations joining, and then when joining, you'll be asked which working group you would like to participate in. Um, Fergus, would you like to add anything to that? Otherwise, we can also go to another question. I think that that's fine. But please, if you have any such questions, do follow up by email at any moment. The people from the TPP um, COP are available to support you on that. Then, Fabio, do you want me to continue with another question or uh, continue with the polls first? I think I think it's uh, it's nice that you're doing the question because people are really. Uh, I see the answers to this polls are coming in like one 
every two or three or five seconds. Right. And until I, until I see it flattens out and nobody's answering anymore, we're not going to move to the next poll. In the next poll, uh, everybody be prepared that we're going to ask you some ideas. So uh, this you're not, there's not going to be any list. All right, great. So Fabio, please just let me know when you feel like there's a, a, the curve is flattening, basically. Um, Fergus, if you can hear us, there's quite a number of questions by different people um, asking, what is the difference between agroforestry and agroecology? And of course, also what are the similarities? And there are related questions around that of how agroecology relates to different terms and terminologies. But I would like to stick just the difference to agro between agroforestry and agroecology and the similarities between that. And I think there's hardly anybody better in the world to speak on that. So Fergus, if you can hear us, could you, could you just provide a short answer of where you see the similarities and differences between these two? Yeah, the great question. And of course, there was a session um, at the World uh, Agroforestry Congress in Quebec in July, which was specifically exploring that. And in one of the uh, answers to, to, to one of those questions in the chat, I did put the link to a blog about that session. So uh, people might find that uh, quite useful. And shortly there will be a recording of the session available um, and, a, and a longer piece um, because there was polls during that session um, and people did come up with a, um, well, the audience, uh, uh, several hundred people, um, um, sort of agreed, if you like, on a statement about that, that interaction. So put, put very simply, Agroecology, uh, um, uh, according to the 13 HLPE principles, uh, is obviously about whole food system uh, transitions um, and, and has those, those 13 explicit uh, principles. Um, agroforestry is often agroecology, but it doesn't necessarily um, need to be. Um, so you can put trees into a very industrial agricultural system I mean, so you could have eucalypts in a, a, a high input um, coffee system, for example, um, which might not meet uh, a number of the agroecological principles. So you can clearly have agroforestry that's not following agroecological principles. And on, uh, equally, you can have agroecology that doesn't involve trees, that, that, that um, uh, it, there aren't any trees involved. But we know that where you do have trees in agroecology, you tend to increase the opportunity for um, uh, good agroecological outcomes because trees are functionally different um, from uh, other components of um, agricultural systems. They live longer, deep root systems, high uh, leafy canopies that are uh, elevated. Um, and uh, there are complex interactions between um, uh, how people access um, and, and use these resources according to gender, ethnicity, and uh, a range of other um, social and economic factors. So the uh, trees really add potential to agroecology, and some of the most well-developed agroecology um, practices and, and, and systems are ones that do include trees. So I hope that was a, a, a useful answer, Matthias. Thank you very much, Fergus. Um, that's not on me to judge, but I do believe it was. And indeed, I think um, without agroforestry and trees, many um, in many parts of the world, agroecology is next to impossible. But as you rightly put it, Fergus, agroecology is so much more than just one of the practices, such as agroforestry. It's really about transforming food systems, taking also socioeconomic and political and cultural dimensions into account. Um, if I see the number correctly, Fabio, we're now at 87 poll participants and it doesn't yep. seem to be going up much more. So <laughs> would you like to continue? Yeah, let's go to the next one, even though I saw uh, when you were saying that we... It went up to 88. Yeah, it went up to 88. <laughs> but okay, the rate at which it's changing is very, very slow. And we ha only have 20 minutes left. And I do want to get more insight. So let me show the results. Okay, so here's your uh, here's what the people voted. You still have time to vote while I'm showing the results if you really, if you don't want to miss up miss the opportunity. So you have case study you examine, like in-depth examination of case studies is the first choice from people. 
a periodic online session with a member. Uh, I knew that was going to be a winner. So second place for that. And request a workshop on a specific topic. I think I think uh, these are the ones which are, are preferred. And then we have all the others. And I, I really want to thank people who have, who have voted because this will give us a clear cut indication on what to prioritize. Having said this, I'm going to move to the next poll. Uh, so here it's really up to you. Um, so what other innovative features would you like to see us develop in the Agroecology TPP COP? You can type whatever you want. Uh, we're going to see the list in a while, but in the meantime, yeah, uh, Matthias, I'll hand it over back to you to keep on uh, going through some of the questions. Over. Great. Thanks so much, Fabio. And I think this is so important. Please do be creative and uh, many of you have brought up really great ideas on the Q&A already. Make use of the Slido of the poll. Point, point to any direction that COP could be going. And um, I think together we can make things happen. I would like to go to a question from Ed Bourgeois, um, pointing that the approach explained about the TPP uh, COP seems rather top down and um, pointing to a positive example from the US with regenerative ag, where scientists and farmers are really engaging quite closely to co-create different materials. And um, in this regard, Ed, I would just like to remind you that the TPP is a, is a coverage platform and there's many projects which do have a much more empowering agency building and co-creative component with farmers in it and the TPP is of global nature. Nonetheless, I would like to give this question to Lisa if you're available in terms of what do you think what the TPP could be doing to be more empowering for farmers, more transdisciplinary, more engaging on the ground with the people who really make a difference in how food is produced. Can, can you see into my phone? Can you see what I just typed? <laughs> uh, no, no, I did not. No. But um, if you type the answer, should please please read it out. And otherwise, no, not please so, go ahead. Not, I was <laughs> responding to, to the poll and I was responding to what other features could be there. Yeah. And I suggested we could have regional like territorial regional um, chapters of the COP and have a possible like find an option for setting aside some funding to facilitate some in-person meetings to ensure that we we connect those two worlds as well right like we are aware and we have like listened to Fabio speak about the incredible opportunities that having a digital community of practice provides but then like continuously making sure that it connects back to the ground and that it involves people who might not be as comfortable in the digital space. And also keeping in mind that agroecology in terms of its practices is land-based and is, is context specific. So let's say, for example, if we look at while there are processes that can be scaled and processes that are similar for, I don't know, producing bokashi for, you know, like making making use of existing resources that someone has in the farm that will be different according to where someone is from. So if there's a possibility for us to somewhat be able to have those localized but collective experiences and for us to be able to facilitate that and have a communication with the digital community of practice, I think that would be fantastic. And that's what I just wrote on the desired features. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful coincidence. Thanks so much, Lisa. And I think for everyone truly engaged in agroecology, this is extremely dear, that farmers are in the center of everything we do. So any ideas you have on how the TPP and the, particularly the community of practice could be improving on that, please point them out either now or later on. And by engaging, you're making a difference in this regard already. Um, then uh, there's a question from Sakib Mahmoud on whether or not the TPP provides training or courses or something similar to agri in, on, in this regard to agroecology. And I think some of the features that Fabio brought up already um, point in this direction already, even though it might not be exactly what Sakib had in mind in terms of somebody coming to the community and providing training. Um, I think this goes in the same direction, but still people like experts from, from the TPP are available for any kind of interaction that you would want. Lisa, is there anything you would like to add to that or Fabio? No, I think your, it's, your answer is perfect. All right, very well. Then we have a question from Enrico from Italy asking, 
as to whether the TPP provides any support to organizations wanting to mobilize and promote the work of the TPP on the ground with the communities. So this goes in the same direction as well. How can communities and farmers be engaged? I think it's not easy for the TPP to provide funding for partners who want to do so, but by becoming a member of the COP, you're going in this direction as well. Maybe Lisa, you, you would have anything to add to that? I think I think this is a question also at several levels. So there's definitely so one of the things, and I, I think I responded to the question in writing as well. Um, we are definitely working on preparing information material about this COP and its features after the workshop because we wanted to include some of the results and some of the reflections um, emerging today into that leaflet. But the, the idea really is to outline in, in a way that is accessible, which, which benefit people have from using it, both, both partners, um, and we, I spoke about the different levels of engagement that exist. We have the partners, the forum members, and the COP participants. We, we really look at how partners can use the platform to ensure that the way they do their science already is more connected and it is an objective just perhaps also a side comment to your your question on the tpp projects supposedly being top down i understand that it's very difficult to explain the complexity of like the various projects that we have in a holistic manner but the people like within all of these projects really work very hard to be transdisciplinary and, and doing do things differently so there's a lot of different things that are being done to be very inclusive, we have very strong engagement processes that build on existing stakeholder mechanisms and networks to really learn from the mistakes perhaps that have been made also in international development over very many years, as we know, over decades. So there is a lot of that happening already, but the, the COP really also looks for how it can improve the scientists and, and the, the partners access and ways of doing things through the COP. So that will be one part of the um, leaflets that we're preparing. And the other thing, um, the other side, if you will, is really looking at those features that we're developing that are accessible to all the users of the COP. So we'll have that um, information material that can, can be used by everybody and can be shared by everybody and that will be on the website. But then beyond that, we, we do we do do like punctual support for specific activities. We often get requests for the TPP or some of the TPP scientists to help develop something, to help think through something. Like we, we get approached by various people and, and you're very welcome to do so. So please come come to us if you want to discuss something, if you have ideas, if you want to just brainstorm about something, please do. We'll we'll try and find ways of accommodating and making time for that as well. And I think my answer was long now. But please Thank always you. feel free to reach out to us. We are always open. Thank you very much, Lisa. I think that answer was extremely important because I think this is what many people are interested and concerned about. Um, Fabio, do you want to wait for a couple of more minutes? I no, think I think I think we have fifty All right. ideas Perfect. in the pipeline, and three people are still <laughs> typing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show the results, and I'm gonna go through. Wonderful. Uh, through, you know, one by one really quickly. And then of course, we're gonna take some time to think about what uh, you all have shared with us, but okay, I'm the, the screen is quite big. So it's gonna be one by one, how to incorporate agroecology in curriculum at higher education institution. Oh, oh, it's gonna change if you keep on typing. Okay. I am interested in evidence-based research in agroecology. We find these was if there were courses, internship. Okay, so courses listed. Okay, that's interesting. Um, yeah, pushing for you know, in, uh, having agroecology in in, in curriculums, mobility, uh, management of soil mi microorganisms. Okay, more workshops on agro agro ecosystem services provider provider insects. Okay, and defend women and girls are not feeling in males' heads. Okay, networking of authorities. Okay, yeah. Farmer-led research and innovation on tier four uh, on banana. Okay, influencing policymakers, farmer engagement. Oh, we got a, a last one, storytelling. Okay, storytelling is actually quite good, I agree. Um, uh, okay, let's see, uh, I'm going quickly. Uh, yeah, but I get, I get interrupted, I need to block. 
I need to lock voting. Otherwise, I'll keep on. I'm sorry, but um, more soil restoration practices for us. Fabio, uh, Fabio yep. I, I wouldn't try and go down such a big list. Okay. Uh, I, I think what we need to do is to make this list available. We will. But perhaps organize it a little bit rather than think that we'll do it justice. Um, just, uh, you know, just sort of scrolling through it. I, I'm aware we're sort of a little bit over time, if I'm not mistaken. Not yet. Oh, we're not. Okay, good. Not yet. Good. <laughs> but okay, yeah, I, I take your point. You're right. I just wanted to get a bit of a gist of what was uh, being presented uh, as uh, potential innovations. I think some of these are actually very good. So thank you for having voted. Now, I'm going to go to the next one. Um, so the next one is actually a... Um, a word cloud. So, uh, and it's really on topics. What topics would you like to see? What agroecology, uh, agroecology, agroecology topics? Sorry, uh, would you like to see discussed in our community or practice? So, um, go ahead. Type. It's a one-word kind of thing. One or two words. It's going to generate a word cloud. Um, I'm. I'm not going to show the word cloud until we get a few of the votes in, but uh, Matthias, so please back to the Q&A. Wonderful. Great, Fabio. And I think we've also seen from the Q&A already that um, quite a lot of topics are of particular interest to, to the participants of today. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing the results of that poll. In the meantime, let's go to another question. Um, this one is from François Stebman. Um, how can new technologies, including the Internet of Things and artificial intelligence, bring transparency to the agroecology agri food value chain? Now, we'd like to extend that question in terms of what is the, the importance and value of um, modern information and communication technologies to agroecological transitions general. There is some research going on in this regard. Um, in, in on an agroecological transitions program, but maybe Fergus also, Lisa, you, you have some points specifically in this regard. And I think this COP is an example of, of how um, ICT is important for agroecology, but more on the farming and connecting producers and consumers side, Fergus. Would you like to say a couple of words on that? Yeah, yeah. And bef before I do, just uh, uh, also to mention uh, um, the um, there is a meeting next week on um, integrated pest management for fall army worm, which was addressing one of the things that was coming up in the scrolling there. Um, and you can, if you look on the news section in the website, you can connect to that. There's a section on agroecological control on uh, next Wednesday. So um, uh, uh, that that's just for people to know. Yeah, in, in and, and th this goes back to this whole question about who is involved and how are they involved? Um, how do we make co-creation a reality? Um, and it's not just through uh, you know, a digital platform like this, it's, it's through all sorts of things. And we need to recognize that digital platforms and, and uh, are, are both hugely um, a huge opportunity and they're also hugely dangerous for from an agroecological perspective because their very power in, in order to um, collate information and to make certain information available all comes down to how things are controlled and the extent to which a platform is democratic the expect uh, it, 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 and, and who has access to it and so on and so forth. Um, and that's why the Million Voices Citizen Science Campaign um, is such an important part of what the TPP is doing now. And that's trying to make um, science genuinely transdisciplinary and not just um, uh, a range of stakeholders being involved in the process of the science, but also in its evaluation and in its interpretation and in setting the agenda. Now, obviously, uh, uh, ICT tools give us much more scope for doing that with much larger numbers of people, much more diverse groups of people. But it's not trivial to organize for that to be done in ways that are genuinely, genuinely empowering for people rather than um, um, uh, and ending up 
um, with with a centralization collation um, uh, 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 of power. So um, I think it's a, this is a really exciting space, one where we need to be really aware of the political uh, um, economy of, of uh, how information is used, um, but it's an exceedingly uh, important uh, and exciting part of, of um, what needs to happen over the next few years. And the critical thing is, is will we be able to generate and create opportunities for people to use uh, digital platforms in ways that empower them, or, or will they get um, uh, overtaken by um, centralizing forces that will tend to operate to disempower people? So it's really incumbent on us to have ensure that there are exciting platforms you know that that empower rather than disempower and if we can if we can help to to uh, people and facilitate the creation of those then we'll be going some way to 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 to, to doing that thanks thank you very much fergus i i hope that was um a good answer to the the people who were concerned about that and i think it's really pointing the right direction um, Fabio, also seeing how time flies, I think I would probably hand it over to you and we can see there's quite the dynamic in the, in the uh, cloud of words already and we can see again that there's different terminologies flying around, so I think this is certainly something the TPP can engage strongly, like also suggested by Les Levidoff in the Q&A, the translational tasks between different approaches to making our food and agricultural systems more sustainable. But um, over to you, Fabio, on the poll. Thank you, Matthias. Yes, so I, I uh, turned on uh, the word cloud so people could see it. And now that you can see it, you can also upvote uh, some of the words that you can see. Um, so that, and that's how you got uh, some of them uh, with more votes and they look bigger, but it, it gives a, a clear cut idea of what the people would like to discuss. I think the question that you that was discussed a minute ago uh, to which Fergus gave an answer was absolutely super inter interesting. And one of those things that I would like to see in a forum on our COP, you know, how do you, how do you make use of, you know, ICT, but not only ICT, now we have artificial intelligence in the agroecological space. What are the power dynamics? Uh, what are the um, technical difficulties? What are the potential benefits and, and so forth? I mean, that's just opening it up to a new whole new level, I think. So um, I, I think this um, wor activation workshop is giving a bit of an idea of what kind of discussions we would like to have. It's really super interesting. So uh, apologies for those who are typing at the moment. I'm just going to go to the last question. The last question is, why would you join the Agroecology TPP uh, community of practice? Primarily to learn about agroecology or to share your knowledge or co-create knowledge, participating in events, networking and connecting, or to address controversies. So um, feel free to put in your, the main reason why you would join our group. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna leave it uh, so that you can see the the uh, results why they come in. Matthias, over to you. I, I hope the webinar will not cut us out uh, so that maybe you can have a, another two or three minutes of discussion on, on, the, on some of the questions. Uh, apologies for those who are online if we're a few minutes late, but I think Maybe we can address one last question when, while the poll is going. Thanks so much, Fabio. And indeed, it seems like it's not cutting off automatically after one and a half hours. So we seem to be safe on that. And I think it's, it's great if we can continue a bit longer for everyone who's willing and able to stay for just a couple of minutes. You're very welcome. Thanks so much for being here. Um, I have a question here from Marcella. Um, from, from Brazil asking, why is Brazil absent from the Agroecology Coalition, despite its importance in, in global agri-food systems and very strong movement and initiatives on agroecology? Um, Fergus, would you like to allude the, to the question of why Brazil is not yet a member of the Agroecology Coalition? Um, well, far be it from me to... Um, uh, uh, uh suggest um well you know how or why different countries uh, may, may wish to join 
obviously um, the, the country joining as a country, which is different from organizations within a country joining, um, is, is of course a political process. Um, and in general, it is being done through the representatives of countries at FAO in Rome, the um, ambassadors to, to Rome of the countries. Um, of course, in big countries like Brazil, um, it's also possible that subnational entities uh, might join, like uh, states or uh, um, um, uh, uh, other um, uh, in other forms. Um, so I guess the the short answer would be that the authorities, um, you know, in in Brazil have chosen so far not to join uh, uh, the coalition. We could actually have a look at whether they've joined other coalitions. I mean, some countries haven't joined any uh, of the coalitions. Um, uh, obviously, it is open for them to do so. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, um, depending on the, uh, you know, the nature of the, the um, uh, official um, uh, government view, uh, they may or may not um, choose to do so. Uh, and of course, they can do so at any time. And of course, countries could also withdraw should they uh, should they change their view. Um, so, so I guess it's it's it's, it's um, to do with with um, with that process. Uh, in general, the number of countries uh, is growing steadily and gradually. I think what's what's really important now, actually, is not how many countries are uh, are members, but the the ones that are um, start doing something. And, and that there's action on the ground. So that would be where my um, priorities would be. Of course, there is a great deal going on in relation to agroecology in Brazil. We had a couple of Brazilian farmers in the World Agroforestry Congress panel discussing that nexus between agroforestry and agroecology. And um, uh, Andrew Michalis, who's the, the uh, C4 ICREF, um, uh, country representative in Brazil um, uh, has just started uh, quite a large um, uh, Amazon project with um, TNC um, in Parastate, which is um, a very, uh, very integrated approach to, uh, uh, to agroecology. So um, there is lots going on, um, but it's a political process in terms of countries um, uh, joining. Thanks. Thank you very much, Fergus. And I think that was important, not just um, for Brazil, but more generally, um, how many countries are joining is not the most important thing, getting action going. And so many organizations from different countries are joining. Lisa, you would like to say something? Yes, just if I may add something. So the TPP, we currently support the Secretariat of the Coalition. And we have realized that sometimes it helps when there are specific contacts within countries that are approached by the coalition secretariat directly, um, which, which the secretariat is perfectly happy to do. So uh, this is an offer that the secretariat is willing to be responsive if participants now today in the event or others um, have contacts within their countries or organizations that they think can be approached and might be interested in being approached by the secretariat. The secretariat is happy to do that as well. Thank you. Very well, thanks a lot, Lisa. I think that's very important. And I see it uh, with 63 active participants in the poll, we seem to have reached a saturation point. So Fabio, over to yep. you. Thank you, Matthias. Yes, very quickly, uh, people voted uh, now 64. So as soon as you say we've reached the point, it goes up one up so <laughs> it's pretty funny okay but uh we can see that the vast majority will be uh joining us to co-create knowledge which i am really happy to hear because that's really the core of uh, our cop um and then of course learn about agroecology networking and so forth so i i really hope that this uh activation workshop gave you a bit of the feeling of how this uh co-creation of knowledge could happen of course, the digital space is a bit different, but we will organize uh, workshops and other things, other uh, modalities as per your request. So I'm going to take off my screen now, hand it over to Matthias for the closing remarks. And I thank everybody for having joined us and for having voted. Over. Thanks so much, Fabio. And 
particularly thanks to everyone who has been here today actively participating this is what a cop should be all about so thanks a lot and i think with this it's it's a starting point for more and more engagement please reach out at any moment um, people are there to support in whatever way they can um, also please be aware that um, the GLF Africa is coming up and every COP member um, is eligible for a free ticket. Should you have any issues in this regard, please do contact the, the people on this call today because um, I have seen some uh, questions in this regard in the Q&A that there have been issues with free tickets. Um, also, the recording of this event will be posted online and as said before if we receive a lot of requests for doing a similar workshop again we would be delighted to do so and um, also please do join um, the TPP on the GLFX platform go to the news section there's quite a lot of interesting events coming up and um, this includes smaller ones and participation of the TPP at large events like of course the climate COP in Sharm El Sheikh, uh, CFS 50 in Rome, the Asia Pacific Forum mentioned before on transforming agri-food systems and should you have any questions in this regard please reach out um, because I have seen from um, Ellie Decay, for instance, Lisa, what, what, um, how is the TPP at which, at which event at the Climate COP active, etc. I think all of the questions you've posed in the Q&A, if they haven't been answered already, they will be answered uh, in due time and people will be notified by email. With this, I would just like to thank you again very much for participating. Please continue engaging, promote the idea of this TPP COP among your colleagues and friends. The more we are, the better. Um, transformation only happens if we work together. Thank you very much and have a wonderful morning, day or afternoon, depending on where you are. Thank you. Thanks for everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. All the best.